urban areas, the recommended and most common method of patrolling is that of multiple patrolling. So called to describe the use of two or more patrols operating together. These individual half sections are commonly known as bricks. In this village, there are three bricks operating in a multiple system. And this film will demonstrate some of the basic skills and techniques used by a brick patrolling an urban area. Before bricks move out on a patrol, detailed orders are given which must include a clear mission and tasks to be completed. I mean, as, as you know, the area we're interested in is Killy Murphy Village. And one of the houses I want you to pay particular interest to is this one down here, number 10. This Before briefing his men, the multiple patrol commander will have already received a detailed briefing from the operations officer. This will include the current situation and threats, details of other patrols operating in adjacent areas, and the tasks of his own patrol. As part of the briefing, the intelligence officer updates the complete patrol on the latest intelligence picture in the area. If you see the bloke who lives there, get him out, have a word with him. Anything you can pick up on him that could be of interest, we want to know about it. When you're down, in this area, From these initial briefings, the multiple street, commander then the produces his own detailed orders, which he gives to the complete I'm patrol. Going to you over to the patrol commander who will give you your detailed orders for the tasks you're going to carry out on your patrol. The commander informs the individual bricks of their specific tasks and how he wants them carried out. The execution. The area will be moving in on this patrol will be area red. His orders must ensure that every man knows his task, how it is to be carried out, and the part he has to play. It's now 11.30 hours. Are there any questions? Good. Outside now for the kit check. The equipment carried by patrols in urban areas varies from unit to unit and from area to area. There is much more equipment available than is shown here, so commanders must identify their individual requirement, then ensure it is carried and that it is serviceable. This is confirmed by a kit check. The carrying of much of the equipment is mandatory and will be laid down in unit standing operating procedures. Much of it is common to all members of the BRIC, but additional items of specialist equipment will be carried by nominated individuals. Soldiers should be smart and well turned out. This helps to instill confidence in themselves and impress the local people with their professionalism. Minimum webbing is worn, the exact amount being determined by the additional equipment they are required to carry. Some of it is shown here. Personal possessions or documents must not be carried. If lost, they would identify them to the terrorist. The sole exception to this rule is the identity discs worn around the neck. A first field dressing must be carried by all, and it's important that every man carries it in the same place, normally laid down in a unit standing operating procedures. In this patrol, each man is carrying one magazine of 18 rounds, but again, this will vary from unit to unit. It's a good idea to mark the top round so you can check at a glance whether or not you have lost some ammunition during the patrol. Each patrol member must carry a notebook and pencil, the notebook attached to the man with a pin and some cord. He also carries his orders for opening fire card, Each man also carries a length of white mine tape, which can be used to cordon off an area. It acts as a psychological barrier and allows soldiers to get behind cover rather than standing out in the open. Here are some examples of the more specialised equipment which is available to patrols. 
The first man on the left is carrying four extra shell dressings. The second man is the baton gunner and he is carrying five 25 grain baton rounds. The third man, a trained photographer, is carrying the Konica patrol camera. This camera should be carried by all bricks in daylight conditions. Each brick has a spotter trained to recognize terrorists. He carries a pocket tape recorder which should be tested before each patrol. The baton gunner has attached an SMG sling to his baton gun, which is strong and reliable. The third man is carrying the patrol supply of evidence protection kit, which is used to bag the hands of suspects. The commander is also carrying some extra equipment. He has his operational aid memoir and notebook. He also carries a torch, a spare battery for his stornophone radio, for which he also has an earpiece. Finally, another useful item, often disregarded in the urban area, a pair of binoculars. Every man carries the self-loading rifle, two of them with optical sights fitted. All weapons are attached to the wrist by a sling. The baton gunner's rifle is fitted with two slings, one attaching the rifle to his wrist and the second fitted normally on the sling swivels, so that when he has to use his baton gun, he can sling his rifle quickly and comfortably. The commander then checks that his radio is working correctly. But remember the problems with security if commanders always do radio checks prior to leaving base. Weapons are checked at the loading bay. Loading is done as a drill and is strictly supervised by the brick commander. It is mandatory to use normal loading and unloading drills. These must not be modified. The gas regulator and site settings are checked before going out on patrol. In urban areas, the recommended site setting is 200 meters. Leaving base, patrols are always extremely vulnerable. So soldiers must hard target out of the base, running from fire position to fire position in pairs, each pair covering the next pair forward. The OPs that guard the base must also cover the patrol routes out onto the ground. Make use of different exits at your disposal and get the bricks into positions to gain depth and mutual support as quickly as possible. Here the patrols are hard targeting out of two different exits as they move onto three separate routes away from the base. Ensure that whenever soldiers are moving there are others in fire positions covering the likely threats. When the bricks are away from the immediate vicinity of the base they settle down into their normal patrol pattern. When bricks patrol in urban areas they will encounter different types of ground which require changes in their formations and patterns of movement. This brick is moving through a row of terraced houses. It's a confined area and there's little cover available apart from the doorways. To give all round defence, each soldier must have an individual arc of observation to cover. Movement is slower than a normal walking pace but positive and confident. Alertness is the key word. Observing their individual arcs of fire and looking out for potential fire positions should the need arise. The brick has arrived at one of its tasks, a house call. While he is chatting to the householder, the commander is very vulnerable. 
The remainder of the brick must therefore adopt good fire positions on their own initiative and cover their arcs of observation. In urban areas, the best fire positions are kneeling, squatting or standing. The prone position is not recommended because arcs will then be limited. It takes time to react from the prone position and it's difficult to engage targets higher than yourself, like blocks of flats or high ground. Another brick, now in a different type of ground which has its own characteristics an open plan estate with semi-detached houses. There are more opportunities here for the brick to spread out and vary its route. For example, garden paths and gaps between houses can be used. Garden walls and the sides of buildings also offer good cover. In areas like these, arcs of observation need to be closely coordinated. It's in open areas that soldiers are most vulnerable to snipers. As part of his patrol route, the commander has been ordered to move from this street into the playground to the right of the picture. He orders the brick to go firm in fire positions while he observes the ground. When he judges it to be safe, the brick can continue, but always keep a foot on the ground. With three men in position to cover his movement across, one man is ordered to move to a new position which will dominate the area. Once he is in position, the next two men move, while the commander covers their rear. Finally, to complete the manoeuvre, he himself moves forward, covered by the rest of the patrol. At all times he has kept a foot on the ground, covering all the likely threats. Once the brick commander is in position, he decides to go firm in that area. Let's look at some of the fire positions adopted by the brick. It's up to each man to use his own initiative and adopt a fire position which makes best use of the cover available while continuing to observe his individual arc of observation. This is a bad fire position, as there is very little cover. He's facing into the patrol and he's not looking particularly alert. This next position is a good one. There's plenty of cover, he's observing outwards, and he's able to react should it be necessary. Remember, when selecting a fire position, you must try to achieve cover from fire and cover from view. When giving all-round defence to a brick, soldiers must face outwards. Meanwhile, the commander has seen someone that he wants to photograph to update his intelligence records. Notice how he uses the camera as unobtrusively as possible. The spotter in the brick tape records details of an individual who is of interest to the security forces. This information, including date, time and location, will be used later during the debrief. The brick commander then continues with the patrol moving his soldiers two at a time because of the nature of the ground. The soldiers are moving at a normal walking pace, observing their individual arcs and covered by the other members of the brick. Those in fire positions are not ballooning about while they are in position. This technique is only used when the threat of shooting is at its highest. As this man turns to face the opposite way, the soldier to the right of the green hut changes his position to cover the rear. And the same is happening on the other side. The brick will continue to move in bounds like this until the commander feels that the situation no longer warrants this type of movement.
The alleyway is a familiar feature in urban areas. Again, commanders must change formations to suit the ground. Alleyways can be useful in breaking up a patrol pattern. They can also be extremely dangerous, especially if there is a set pattern to the patrolling, if the ways in which they are used are seen to be predictable, and if they provide a soft target. Soldiers should never bunch and should move along alleyways very carefully. Here the commander prefers to move each soldier forward individually, the rest covering him forward up and down the alleyway. Note the soldier in the left foreground. He's going to use cover on his right hand side and has therefore moved his rifle into his left shoulder to make best use of the cover available. His weapon has an optical sight fitted. This can be very useful for looking at specific objects, but it should not be used for general scanning of the area as it will severely limit his arc of observation. We have covered only a few of the ways to cross different types of ground. There are many others. The important thing to remember is that commanders should always appreciate the type of ground they are moving through and then adopt the positions and formations to suit that ground. During a patrol, bricks will have to cross gaps where they are vulnerable to sniper fire so they must develop a technique to cover themselves across. As this brick moves forward to the T-junction, the first two men get into position to cover the different directions. The brick commander then signals forward the second pair, who are covered across the junction by the two already in fire positions. Once they arrive at the other side of the gap, they adopt fire positions to cover the first two across the junction. The brick commander is moving his second pair one at a time, so that there are always three men in fire positions covering the three directions of the junction. Not until all members of the brick are across the gap does the commander continue the patrol. This brick now moves up to a crossroads. They want to move straight across the junction. Once again, the first two members of the brick get into fire positions to cover the second pair across. This crossing is more difficult because there are four directions to be covered. Notice the speed of movement of the brick. As they cross, they move a little faster than normal walking pace, but still cover their allocated arcs of observation. There is no need to hard target across these gaps, except in emergency or where the area is well known for shooting attacks. Remember, if soldiers start to run, it becomes almost impossible to adequately cover their arcs of observation as they cross the gap. However, they must not remain on junctions for longer than is really necessary. Meanwhile, this brick is moving up another road and is about to carry out a P-check. As the brick commander signals the patrol to go firm, each man adopts a fire position which gives the maximum all-round defence to the brick. Notice the way in which the commander uses the building as cover by getting his back to the wall. And don't be afraid to use the civilian as cover. When dealing with P-checks, always be firm but polite. Give me your name and address. 
Hammock Bailey. Who might rise? Six Cleveland's plus. Six Cleveland's plus. Six Cleveland's plus. Six Cleveland's plus. And your date of birth, sir? 26, 257. It's important that soldiers do not remain in fire positions for too long. They must be prepared to move frequently from position to position. When the brick commander has got the information he requires, he'll change his position with another member of the patrol, so that a civilian being P-checked cannot hear the transmissions on the radio. This is also a good opportunity for the new soldier to chat up the civilian. When the brick commander receives the all clear from his operations room, he politely lets the civilian go. The brick continues, but notice that the patrol has changed its direction of movement. The brick commander is trying to make his patrolling as unpredictable as possible. Just one way of achieving the unpredictability which is so essential in avoiding set patterns and preventing terrorists from monitoring your movement. Another vulnerable period on patrol is when the brick is returning to base. Soldiers will be tired and there may be a tendency to drop their guard as the patrol nears its end. Bricks should always hard target back into base, moving in bounds and covered by soldiers in fire positions and by the OPs in the base. The multiple patrol commander has coordinated the movement of the three bricks to cover each other as they return. This secures as much mutual support as possible right up to the end of the patrol. On return to base, weapons must be immediately unloaded. And this should be done as a drill on the orders of the brick commander. He should also check all weapons before allowing his soldiers to move away from the unloading bay. As soon as unloading is completed, the brick moves from the unloading bay and the commander checks that each soldier has not lost any equipment during the patrol. If anything is missing, it must be reported immediately to the operations room. Finally, the complete patrol must be debriefed immediately in order to give soldiers the opportunity to report anything they may have seen or heard while they still remember it. As we were walking around in the area of Gillam Drive and Staple Street, I noticed quite a bit of suspicious activity in that area. One or two yobbos on street corners dicking us. Did anybody see anything suspicious in, in that area and that they noticed? Well, sir, I saw David Rafty on the junction of Staple Street and Park Road. He was speaking to Shane O'Connor, who was in a red Ford Escort. Registration, Alpha Uniform India, 6278. Here the multiple patrol commander is doing the debrief himself, with the intelligence officer in the background noting down the information Anybody gathered by the patrol. No? Fine. A good patrol. Well done. You work very hard indeed. The next patrol is out at 16.30 hours. Fine. Survival on the streets in a hostile urban area depends largely on the basic infantry skills of the individual soldier. Lessons and techniques continually change. Therefore, all soldiers should know, practice and perfect these techniques before deploying on operations.